My name is Perry Stargell. I train out of Albuquerque, uh, Jackson Week MMA. And I'm Mikey England. I train out of Ignite MMA here in Kansas City. Uh, we're getting to that point in my career where it can be a little difficult to find me fights. And it was just a, a short notice option that we, we got to uh, go up against Mikey England. And we, li we liked the tape that we saw on him, so we just like jumped at the chance. Wrestled in college and just throughout my adult life, uh, moved a couple places and landed in Kansas City. It was a good fit for me. And um, just one day I decided I need a little more in my life. So I, I started reaching out to local MMA gyms, started training jiu-jitsu, and then started looking at the, uh, the MMA classes. And I was like, I think I can do that. And then next thing you know. I think he's a very athletic guy. I think he's gifted in that aspect, but I think he's, he's missing some of the finer details when it comes to fighting, and we're looking to exploit that. Uh, the way he keeps his hands is a little too stagnant. His in and out movement, he doesn't angle off as much, so it's easy to manipulate him there. And he jumps in too hard, can't really throw a combination. So we're looking to stop the one power shot that's coming and just do what we want afterwards. Watch some of his fights, very tough dude, has a lot of power, a lot of, uh... A lot of danger factor actually, and um, doesn't doesn't seem to have any like big holes in his game or anything. He's pretty well rounded, and I feel him jumping in on something and me getting a good counter shot and being able to finish that way. But if not, we're just going to ride the wave, and we know what he's going to do. So, could be a decision, could be a second round TKO. I'm ready for a three round war. You know, I, uh, anything less than that is icing on the cake, but for me, it's like I'm ready for the hardest 15 minutes of my life, and, you know, I don't expect, expect anything less than that. Having that main advantage is like what you're getting looked at for the next level. So making sure that I'm there, I show out while I'm there. It could be, could be my last fight on the regional scene, you know, if I do well with you guys, for all I know. Uh, it, gets, it gets the heart pumping for me, thinking that of myself as a performer. Uh, as a as a new age gladiator, and uh, get to go out there and freaking beat the hell out of someone in front of a bunch of people, I'm like, that's cool. And now for Fighting Alliance Championship main event. Walking out first, fighting. Out of the blue corner, Perry Stargell. Stargell waiting for the beat to drop before he makes his long-awaited entrance. This is a, a fight that's got action-packed written all over it. The Jackson Week product Perry Stargell has finished eight of his nine professional wins by stoppage. But man, I've, I've watched a, a decent amount of tape on this guy, and every time I see that big old scar on his chest, it just I guess kind of gets me fired up. Like, I know this guy's ready for war. Yeah, no, that's some samurai stuff. That, that's intimidating on its own. If I'm looking across the cage and a guy looks like he's been sliced with a sword, I'm, I'm already like, what am I going to do with this guy? Perry Stargell first came on my radar about four and a half years ago. Uh, had a good, had a fight with a good friend of mine named Ferreris Golden as his last fight on the amateur circuit. And uh, man, I've just been following him loosely ever since. And every time I uh, check him out, this dude seems to impress me more and more. You know, got big punches, the, a great ability to, to mix it up in, in the exchanges. And you know, not a guy who's going to be afraid to wrestle and grapple with uh, Mikey England, regardless of his division. One prowess. Yeah, very explosive. Has that one shot power. We've seen deliver some pretty devastating knockouts. I had I actually enjoyed my, my research on uh, on Stargell. He, he has that one shot power. He knows how to wrestle defensively. So let's see if he can keep this on the feet. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, Mikey England.
The leader of the Maniac Army flying his flag as he makes his entrance for the main event here at FAC 22. No stranger to the big lights here or the main stage. I'm uh, really interested to see how the Maniac feels with the incredible striking that Perry Stargill is going to put in his face. Yeah, Mikey England, just that high-level collegiate wrestling. But there's collegiate wrestlers, and, and there's what Mikey England has done at Iowa State and at Mizzou. Very high-level wrestler, very explosive. And, and his striking keeps getting better time in, time out. But where, where he really shines and excels is, is the takedowns to heavy top pressure to some nasty ground and pound. I alluded to uh, earlier to you when we were just talking off mic about this fight. Mike England has this rare ability to land devastating ground and pound in such a small amount of space that it's hard to find. I referenced Isaac Logarian in saying that, another FAC standout now in the UFC. Just their ability to land really nasty shots that usually you need a lot of posture for, but in such small space. It's where he's landed a lot of his knockouts or, or a lot of his submissions, forcing people to give up subs. Mikey England 8-1 as he steps in the cage tonight, looking for another finish on his record and hopefully get that final call up to the dance that he's been ever so waiting for. He's been itching for it. He's been on the short notice list for quite a while, but he said, hey, I'm not looking to, to wait around. I, at my age, I, I'm ready to get in there now, so let me prove it. Let, let me take a fight and let me prove that. 31, 32 years young, Mikey England is gonna have the five-year age advantage over Perry Stargell on our Bet MGM odds tonight. Mikey England is the minus 165 favorite to Perry Stargell's plus 125 underdog. The FAC main event is brought to you by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to the brighter side of tequila with Milagro. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Perry Stargell. Oh and his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, maniac Mikey England. Oh baby, let's go. The final, oh baby, let's go for the night. Come on, great announcer, Woody. Ready, ready, time keep. let's run. And we are underway for our main event of the evening here at FAC 22. Good right hand just sneaks over the top for Perry Stargell as he throws a lead leg front kick. Yeah, just glances over it. Look, look for Stargell to use that reach of his to, to hit Mikey from a range where he can't get hit. And he can hit Mikey. Fan of the level change for, for England. Wants to put it in Stargell's head like, hey, I can shoot for a takedown any time as he eats a, a right hook once again. Yes, yeah, circling out with his hands down, and I think Perry Stargell was looking to take advantage of just that. Yeah, we saw Mikey having a hard time finding his range as to where Stargell uh -oh. had no hard time. Loose attempt at a ninja choke there for Perry Stargell as Mikey England fends it off and is able to secure his first takedown of the evening. Yeah, Mikey's submission awareness is, is, is great. We've seen it time and time again inside the, the, this FAC cage. But this is where Mikey really shines. On the feet, was having a hard time finding his range as to where Stargell was landing from the second the bell rang with that, that sneaky hook. But now this is Mikey's world right here. His top pressure leads to the ground and pound, leads to the back, leads to full mount. And we haven't really seen anybody be able to get up from under him. By far the toughest opponent Mikey England has faced so far. Let's see if Perry Stargell is able to use the cage here and help get back to his feet. And there's a first for everything, guys. Great get up front from Stargell. Uh, butt scoots his way to the fence, uses that cage as some help. As England is, is fishing for another takedown here, trying to reap that leg. Yeah, no, no disrespect to anyone Mike England has fought before, but you know, coming from a gym like Jackson Wink, you know, you're, you're not going to see uh, guys like that waste time on the ground, you know.
and Mikey is yet to still find his range uh, uh, in, in the striking department. Yeah, he's almost a little too far out and just looks, I was getting ready to say, he's looking like he's just trying to set up that big overhand. You know, almost using those entry shots to kind of blind his opponent and set up the, uh, the big overhand. I'd like to see him initiate that grappling again. This time not off of a big shot being landed on him and maybe slipping off that shot. Castardo is throwing some heaters. If, if that lands on the chin, that, that could be night-night for Mikey England as we see another one land on the chin right there. Stardew smiling as he finds his range here on the chin of Mikey England. You know, as you said, first time for everything earlier. We saw Perry Sarge really the, the only person to kind of effortlessly get up from underneath Mikey England. You got to wonder how much that plays on his psyche when that has to be his first game plan tonight. Nin Ninja Choke looks like you got to watch out for this with, with these long limbed people. Beautiful wow. scramble. Great hook sweep to come up on top, but Mikey England staying with the scramble and controlling the bottom leg and not letting Perry Stargell get to his feet. Beautiful scramble from both men. Mikey's used to those. You know, he's competed at a high level in grappling, even when he was very green to the sport. Absolutely. Just, just from that high level collegiate background he has. I was going to say, there's a, a pretty viral video of Mikey England as a fresh blue belt starching some black belts in grappling tournaments across the internet. Sargent fishing for Kimura here. I think it's more to, to bite some time. He's gonna have a hard time finishing this. As I say that, he gets the extension. No legs are involved, so Mikey might just be able to pass over. He lets go of it. But good to make Mikey work like that. You know, not, not just staying complacent on, the, on his back. Perry doing a great job controlling the elbow too to minimize the damage of these strikes. A lot of inside framing going on here and battling for this position as Mikey tries to pummel his elbow back inside. Stargell doing a good job of mitigating the, the damage he's taking here on his back. Mikey England just staying heavy on the chest to chest pressure here. Short little elbows being thrown. 20 seconds left here, round number one in the Hoy Excavation time clock. If you're Mikey England, uh, I'd like to see him just let it go. Yeah, you got nothing to lose here, 20 seconds. Let's end the round with a bang. Round number one is in the books of our main event of the evening. Mikey England tallying up 17 strikes to Perry Stargell's five, but there was a big one that was landed on our Concrete Inc. replay. Perry Stargell doing a great job staying active on the bottom, but Mikey England finally able to secure the top position as we went through the round there and uh, ended up dominating the second half, staying up on top. There in the Concrete Inc. replay, we see that scramble attempt from, from Stargell to use that elevator hook to try to create the scramble. Mikey stayed on top. Mikey ends the round on top. I think it's clear the path to victory for Mikey here as well for Stargell. Stargell's having lots of success on the feet. Mikey's having lots of success in the grappling department. The thing for Stargell is he can end this at any moment. If one of those straight shots lands on the chin of Mikey England, that could be lights out. Yeah, we saw him wobble Mikey a few times with those punches, and um, I'm interested to see if he goes right to the grappling right away. Tell you what, if I had the wrestling ability of Mike England, I would. But one thing about fighting a much taller, longer fighter like Stargell is you have to kind of get creative with the, the takedowns you're using. Like we saw Mikey go for a, a DC one or a reap on the fence. It's hard with these tall, longer guys. They're just so well balanced. They land like cats. So you kind of have to be creative. Like we saw him treetop the leg. That's a great takedown to do on a taller, longer guy. Way more active with his feints this round. Mikey England's looking a little bit more calm in range right now. Good feint on the shot to land the overhand. 
Looks like Perry Sarge is just kind of waiting for his entry right now. Yes. Looking for one of those big jumping entries and looking to land that big shot. I was just about to say that. Almost like waiting on a nice counter opportunity. And there it goes. There's one. I'd like to see Mikey kick less of the body and head. He got caught on, on one leg earlier in the, sorry, in the first round, which, which caused him to, to initiate the grappling pretty quick after being uh, knocked to the ground for a second. Now Perry Starge are definitely looking to counter right now. Maybe not wanting to open up too much and expose himself to one of those big explosive takedowns. Oh, wow. Big right hand stuns Mikey England for just a second. Yeah, he whips that right hand. It comes from out of your peripheral because he throws it from the oh, waist. Oh, wow. And that's Another the same one. one again. Same shot. This one actually sits him. Let's see if the third one comes down the pipe. If I'm in his corner, I'm imploring him to fit in. Shoot for a takedown uh, yesterday, like now. Three minutes left here in this second round. Mikey England eating a bunch of big shots and another. He almost like faints the jab, but he's throwing that hook from his pocket. Justin, if you see where his right hand is located right now, it's from his hip. He's throwing it from his hip, so it, it comes around your peripherals, right around your guard, and just whips you right on the chin. Uh, very Alex Pay like You know, especially when you're coming in, you're, you're not seeing those shots so much as you're coming forward. It's almost, like you said, not only coming from below you, but kind of ends up behind you as you're coming in, and that's why I think we're seeing Mikey getting dropped. Yeah, and I, I meant to say this earlier, but Stargell does a very good job of just staring at the middle of your chest. That's what you're supposed to do. A lot of fighters will look at, like, your opponent's eyes. They're trying to, like, fall in love or something. But you're supposed to look at the middle of the chest, and you can see everything. I can see the feet. I can see the legs. I can see your head. I can see your hands. And, and Stargell does a great job of doing that. Mikey England finally getting his bearings back enough to get in on a takedown attempt. Got to shake the cobwebs if he wants to survive here in round number two. And and don't get it don't get it twisted. Stargell is starting to slow down himself too. Just took a, a sharp look at the clock, but that that that's been his, the best weapon he's had so far. He's starting to look around, and that, that's something you see a lot with uh, fighters that are tired. Is we call it like looking at Legos on the floor. Sure. And and it happens a lot in the gym when, when fighters get tired that they start to do sub like subconscious things that they don't even realize that they're doing, but that doesn't mean that right hook can't, can't knock out Mikey England. Mikey looking to the corner. I don't like that. Yeah, that, that scared me. I thought Perry was about to unload. That's a very inexperienced thing to do for someone at, at Mikey's level. That's a big no-no. And Perry holds up the one finger and says, one more and you're done. Thirty seconds left in the second round. Possibly a 10-8 round considering the two drops, but that all depends on how the judges decide to score it. Another left hand finds its home. Round number two comes to a close. Mikey England facing a little bit of adversity here for the first time in a long time as we go to the concrete ink replay. They received a big low kick landing from Mikey, but that was the story of the second round. That check hook right on the chin of Mikey. That's the second one that drops Mikey England. Once again, that third. And again, it comes from out of your peripherals, from down from your hip, straight jab from the southpaw stance of Perry Stargell. Snaps the head back of Mikey England. No question, that round goes to Stargell, and we can very well be 1-1 one -one going to the third. I'll be very all the momentum in Stargell's favor. I was going to say, I'll be very shocked if we're not 1-1 one -one here going into round number three. But as we check the stats here, total ground control time for Mikey England, looking at two and a half minutes. That was all in round number one.
Perry Stargell cruising late. And not much energy oh, being expressed from Stargell. You know, I, I mentioned he, it looks like he was slowing down in the second round. I think both these fighters are tired, but he, he's constantly waiting for, for Mikey to make the mistake. It, it's, it's a lot of counter fighting. Ooh, that L step paying. Uh, Barry Stargell biding his time. Pop, Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, pops another jab, splits the guard of Mikey England. Yeah, Stargell being a little more active this round after all the success he had in the second on the feet. Mikey England. There's that balance I spoke of. It's so tough to take down these tall, longer people. Finally secures the takedown. Steps over, looking to pin this bottom leg here, but Perry Stargell just right away gets his guard back and is looking to sweep. And if Mikey England wants to win this fight, he has to remain in this top position. Stargell doing everything he can to use those elevator hooks, those butterfly hooks to, to get him off of him. Great balance there from Mikey England using his head post to stay on top. Started doing a good job getting his head off the cage, so now he can start to move his body a little bit more freely. As they say that, break dancing out the back door, and up on top is Perry Stargell. Very impressive scramble. I've had the ability to train with Mike England, and I know how good his, his weight distribution is, so for, for Stargell to be creative with that scramble and get on top, very impressive. You don't climb the podium to become a Division I All-American without strong hips and to uh, perform something like that against Mike England, like you said, is just an incredible feat of athleticism. And Mikey not necessarily looking to get up, not, not looking for a underhook. N not used to being in this position on his back is Mikey England. Not sure I've ever actually seen him here in a fight. Trying to belly down a bit. Just looking to try to get up. Got to start to build his base here and get up to his feet just like that. Incredible job from Mikey England on the timing. Hands are locked. We're going to see Stargell go down here. Big blast double as Mikey England is digging deep right now. You can see it on his face. He is dog tired. He's still down in this round, in my opinion, and with half this round left to go, he needs some damage here or to look for a, a finish of some sort. Every time Stargell has been on his back, he's done a, a great job of, of just making it hard for, for Mikey to land big shots. And then also, his ability to scramble has been great this entire fight. Two minutes left here. Not a lot of mistakes being made in this third round. Crowd getting behind Mikey. Try to pass into mount, but those long legs of Stargell are hard to get behind. You know, Perry Stargell like, almost leaving his half guard open on purpose to maybe initiate some movement and scrambling for Mikey England to try and get up in, in, in that mix. And, and he's good of, of choosing the, the spots he explodes in, right? It's t very tiring to do so. You have to pick your spots wisely, especially when you're not using that much technique and you're just exploding at the right time. But he picks those spots very wisely. Mikey England pouring it on, able to finally get to the full mount position. Perry Stargell doing his best Derek and Lewis impression, trying to just stand up. And I just know Stargell is very explosive and athletic just from watching the last three rounds. His ability to get out of the mount the way he did just now is impressive. Mikey England retaining top position here. Looks like he's looking for an arm triangle. I'd like to see him secure this round by landing nasty ground and pound. Yeah, 40 seconds left. He can close out the show here. Got the bottom side wrist controlled, looking for the short choke. Just bulldozing Perry Stargell to keep him flat on his back. 
the grit of Mikey England. It will not be doubted after this one. Extreme tightness, toughness jump from both these gentlemen. They're both tired. Struggles doing everything he can to try to get up. Mikey doing everything he can to stay on top. 10 seconds left. Mikey England just laying it on. Oh. Holy wow. cow. What a there, fight. There's not a butt in a chair right now, what ladies and gentlemen. Fight. The whole crowd is on their feet. Wow. Mikey in on that high crotch on the second attempt. Finally gets Stargell down in the third round here on the Concrete Inc. replay. Stargell with a very impressive scrambling ends up on top. Mikey took some shots on his way up. Let's not forget the success Stargell had in that third round. But to close this round out, Mikey on top in full amount at times, on his back at times, was able to finally land some big shots. This is what Mikey wanted to do early on in the fight. This is what he's best at, suffocating top pressure devastating ground to pound and was finally able to, to be successful with that game plan in the third round. Very, very tough fight, regardless of who's the winner. I think both these gentlemen are gonna learn a lot from this fight and, and just extreme toughness and grit shown from both. Yeah, this is, this is definitely the type of fight that will prove Mikey England is absolutely unequivocally ready for the next level. You know, has faced a little bit of adversity only once in his career, resulting in his only professional loss. But even then, that was a short, I think, 40-second fight where he got stunned early, ate a big shot, and his opponent jumped on his neck and was able to close the show early. But to withstand the damage and the shots that Perry Stargell laid throughout the second round and come back with an emphatic performance in round number three and almost stopping Perry Stargell himself, Mikey England is ready for the show, and we'll see the rest of the fight stats here. Everybody, put your hands together. What a fight! Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by unanimous decision, out of the red corner, Maniac Mikey England! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by your winner, hometown hero, Mikey England. Mikey, what a war. What an absolute war. You show toughness, you show grit. How happy are you with that performance? Man, uh, I work a lot in the gym, do all these things, but I've always been good at blocking punches with my face. <laughs> and uh, that showed tonight, I think. You did pretty good at that tonight, but let's not forget, you got the win, most importantly, over a tough, tough vet in Stargell. In the second round, you got clipped with the right hook a couple of times. You get dropped into the third round. What's going through your head? You just got dropped, third round, you need that round. What's going through your head? Uh, I had a little self-talk. I said, stop being a fucking pussy. Go fucking take him down, try to win the fucking fight instead of feeling sorry for yourself. So that's what I tried to do. Well said, we need more of that. Mikey. What's next for you? Nine and one, as a pro, you've been on the short list to the UFC for a while now, what's next? Man, I, uh, I just gotta, gotta stay in the gym, keep fucking working, I'm ready for whatever comes my way. I'm trying to make it to the UFC, I'm trying to fight on ESPN, I'm trying to get paid some freaking money for this shit, and uh, I wanna take all these fans with me, you know? Go fight in Vegas. After I win, we can go party or something, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I love it. You deserve it. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Mikey England. The maniac Mikey England in the Milagro winner's circle in our main event of the evening here at FAC 22, live from Cable Dahmer Arena. I think that just about does it for us here tonight, live on Spectation Sports.